Welcome back to the Forensics Detailing channel. Don't forget to subscribe and bell and join us on the Patreon community. Check out the description. How are you doing? Now, one of my uh, viewers or a commenter, Andrew Duff, made this comment that I've written on the board. Hi, John. Great video. I'm new to polishing. I'm using one-step polish. It's an important. That's a variable. My question is, how many times can you polish a car before the clear coat is damaged? Thanks. Andrew, that is a cracking question and it's worth covering in a video. So the key word here is clear coat. 99% of the cars nowadays are clear coated. Very few cars still use single stage paint. There might be a couple of vans out there that still use them. Some older models and stuff still use them. So very quick question to anyone watching this video, okay? And it's, it's important just to do this. So we have a metal panel underneath this roof and then it has... It normally has some sort of factory coating, don't they? They call it e-coat on a panel. You know, if you go and buy a panel, it comes like black, you know, with an e-coat on it. Um, then we spray on top of it a primer, you know, um, you know, like <laughs> typically a grey primer. And then you spray on top of that automotive paint, a few layers. And then you spray on top of that a few layers of clear coat, okay? So you've got different sandwiches. Typically at home, and most professional detailers can only measure the overall depth of the surface, the clear coat, down to the metal. So you get the overall depth of all those different layers of sandwiches of e-coat, primer, paint, and clear coat, okay? Um, there are, you know, you can get the, the Delphisco, I can't remember the model, the ultrasound thing that gives you all the different um, depth readings, but no one's gonna have one of those. So we can only guess is the first thing, and we can only measure the total overall thickness of the paint system. So we, it's important to do the layers there. E-coat there, so we'll say, then we'll say primer, and then we'll say paint. Uh, paint, uh, you get, sorry guys, I know you wanted me to crack on, and then clear coat, okay? Now, let's just run through all the variables involved here. So the first thing is the clear coat thickness is gonna vary. Some places, you know, some manufacturers might put down three or four layers of clear coat. So your slice of the pie of clear coat might be big with, on some cars and might be very thin on other cars. To give you some examples, there are modern clear coats that I think are less or around 10 microns. So 10 one thousandths of a millimeter thick, 10 microns. But typically, on most cars, like the BMW F series, you get about 50 microns of clear coat, just to give you, I mean, that it can vary. You know, I'm just giving you some examples, um, microns. And with aftermarket paints, you could find they put quite a lot of clear coat on, and you might have, you know, 60, 70, 80, would be a bit unusual, you know. You don't tend to get that much to play with. Um, so it can vary between 10 microns and 50 is a good ballpark figure. Let me know in the comments what you think that variance in clear coat would typically be on average, because that'd be a really good piece of information, because this could be painters and stuff that know more about this than I do. Next thing, the clear coat type, you know, and the clear coat hardness. So there's all different manufacturers of clear coats, um, you know, Lesson, uh, is it De Boers? Um, You know, you'll know more about that than I do, put in the comments all the different manufacturers of clear coats that you can go and buy and spray stuff. Uh, and there's different hardnesses. There's also top coats, you know, clear coat top coats with the, the silica carbide, the hard stuff, you know, the scratch resistant paint top coat. Um, so you might find your clear coat layer could have a base coat or a first coat of something and then like a top coat of something really hard. That So that could make it even more complicated so like you might cut very slowly at first and then get through to the soft stuff and like then fly through it um how much we put write that down and that's a, just triggered an important thing so the type of clear coat can vary you know on how quickly you get through it and how hard it is how thick it is the temperature at which the clear coat is can vary so if you're cutting it on a baking hot day outside it might not cut as well uh, if you've got it in winter where it's all nice and cool. Um, so the temperature that you're working on can affect that. Um, the abrasive type that you're using, so one-step polish you're saying there. Well, I've just done a video on one-step polishes 
and they don't all cut the same. So one one step polish might cut like crazy, another might barely cut. Your pad choice, okay, so you might be using a soft finishing pad, you might be using a stiff cutting pad, you might be using a wool pad, you might be using a microfiber pad. Your machine choice as well, which I didn't put on this list, you might be using a high speed rotary, you might be using a dual action polisher, you might be using a false rotation. They will all affect your cut rate. Uh, the machine speed that you run it at, you know, if you run it at speed one, you're not going to cut as fast as running it at speed four or five. Your arm speed, so how quickly you move the abrasive the machine over the abrasive slurry, the quicker you move it, the less you're working it. Um, you know, so the actual time that you're working the abrasive. The pressure on the, the pad is a variable that affects cut. Um, why did I write how much? Oh, yeah. Now, that's a sub-question. So there's a lot of variables. So to answer your question, how many times can you polish a car before the clear coat is damaged? The answer is, I don't know. <laughs> because I don't know all of these variables. If I was with you, with all the equipment I've got, we could do some readings. We could survey the car and watch the channel on for how to survey the car. We'd go around... Take a reading there and it's say 110 microns. Take a reading there, 111, 109, 111, 113, 114. We get good consistency. So we know we've got a consistent panel and it might be OEM. I'm just giving you examples. If you measure and it's like 200, you know, you've got paint on top of paint. Um, people say, you know, measure in the door, in, open up the doors and measure in there because that's never buffed on. Uh, but then, then there might not be as much paint in there sometimes. So... Um, what you're looking for is inconsistencies when you go over with a standard depth gauge. You're looking for high readings and low readings. So if I've got 110 all over the bonnets, um, the problem is like the rear quarters could have less paint because the bonnet's sprayed in a different position. The paint falls in it better and this has got to be sprayed on vertically so you can have different levels of paint there. But again, consistency. So if we had 125 over all of this, we'd be okay. And then suddenly if we went down to a separate panel, or we went around the other quarter and it was all running at 90, we'd suddenly, we've spotted a problem. So let me give you a ballpark answer to your question. Let's assume it's the average car with average clear coat and you've got 50 microns of clear coat to play with. We don't want to really take away more than half of that clear coat. What happens when you take away too much clear coat? This is really good information. You get one warning sign. And when you get the warning sign, it's too late to fix it really you're, you're screwed here's the warning sign can you see i don't know if you can see that yeah you can can you see that patch there that's low clear coat that that light piece there there's some more low clear coat there you see that patch yeah see it better this way can't see what you're seeing you see that white patch that's the clear coat starting to thin out if i keep buffing on that I'll go through the clear coat and then I'll see like a dark patch ring appear somewhere. It will start as a tiny little circle and it'll get wider and wider quickly and I'll get transfer and, and it won't be glossy. It'll be flat matte black because the clear coat is what creates the gloss. So if you ever see those little footprints appearing, you're about to go through. What you should do or the general rule of thumb is you shouldn't probably use more than 50% of your clear coat. So on an average car with working to the 50 micron uh, reading you've got 25 microns to play with when you cut away 25 microns that's a hell of a lot of chopping um, you shouldn't really be chopping that much you should on most cars in my opinion it, <laughs> this is the the thing you should it be unusual to like do 99 percent of the time you can do one or two sets of heavy cutting heavy cutting to take if you're just removing, removing swirls then mo most times you don't have to do two you know one heavy cut set with a really good abrasive like h9 on the right pad you should dig out a good level of correction but there's some cars that are old that are really swirly and you need to do two some paints are rock hard and you need to do three so i'd say if you've got a good readings and you work into the 50 micron level then generally three sets of cutting is you you start want to get concerned when you go beyond that okay wet sanding is a t completely different subject we're not going to talk about that but just cutting on machine you know when you go beyond three i mean some people be screaming at the, 
the screen saying, no, you could do five, you could do six, you could do seven. But I'm saying, at what point should you start getting worried? You know, because this is generic advice. So I'm saying, generally, it'd be unusual to do more than three sets of cutting. I mean, I always like to do one. <laughs> that should be your aim, is to try and, if you're going to cut, try and cut rapidly, you know, so you can, you know, that's just the way it is. So there's a bit of advice. I think I've said that before and I haven't got shot down in flames because people, because we're explaining the comp complexity with it. So my question to you guys is, what do you think as a generic piece of advice how many sets of cutting would you do on a car before you advise someone to be careful? I think three is probably, you know, if you know what you're doing, you could probably do a lot more. But yeah, that's a good starting point. With single stage polish, you know, it's going to be more. You, probably had, you wouldn't even need to be alarmed probably after doing it five or six times. And with an out and out finishing polish, Jesus, you can use it. You're just really skimming off the surface. When you do a heavy cutting set, you might lose two to three microns depending on all these variables here you know you could go really hard and maybe take away four microns with a wool pad and you know real aggressive compound or something like that um so then it starts giving you a little bit of an idea but typically a single stage is going to take away maybe two three microns something like that so you, you know you could in theory do that 10 times to hit 25 microns and you'd be halfway through uh, but obviously it's the consistency on the car is is the thing isn't it it's is there any low spots the edges don't have as much clear coat you've also another thing that I talked about once is when you're overlapping your sets a little little lines get worked tw twice as much so you're actually in some places you're cutting twice where on the main bits that don't overlap you're cutting once so you can go deeper on some of those things and you almost have like a grid of where the overlaps are of where you've chopped deeper so you could think about that as well although that's probably over complicating it so there we go guys there is a good answer to um how many times can you polish a car before the clear coat is damaged it's a piece of string type question and i've gone done my best off the top of my head to go into why it's a piece of string give you some parameters there's probably lots of more thing, variables here. Can you think of other variables that I've missed? Um, and put in the comments what you feel about this whole discussion and what your experience is. Have you ever gone through clear coat by mistake? <laughs> the easiest way is wet sanding and you just catch an edge. You can go through an edge so quickly when you're wet sanding. Um, you, you know, you can, you can, a professional detailer, should really be having a look at the paint depth gauge before they buff on the car, you know, just to do some sanity checks. Um, but a lot of times if a new car comes in and it's like one or two years old, you can just, and you know you haven't got to go mad on it, you can just buff it without taking readings. But you always probably should, really, shouldn't you? Just as a sanity check, especially if it's a valuable car, or even if it isn't. Anyway, that's enough waffle. Hope that was a good answer. Take care, don't forget to subscribe. See you soon. Bye for now. Where was I?